G'day guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. The BBL 13 season for 2023 slash 24 is almost upon us, so I thought this would be the perfect time to jump on and do my predictions for the up and coming season. And in this video, we're going to be running through my ladder predictions going from 8th through to 1st, and then giving my grand final prediction alongside my ultimate winner for this up and coming season. Obviously, it's super exciting. This season looks to be the best we've seen in a little while, so we've got a lot to get through. Without further ado, drop a like, drop a sub if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's get into things. Alrighty, so getting into things, like I said, we're going to begin from 8th and work our way up. So in an 8th position and the wooden spooners of BBL 13, I have the Melbourne Stars now. This would be their second straight year in at last as they did finish there last year. Unfortunately, this team doesn't seem to be showing any signs of improvement over the past few years. Now, we had a massive trade with the Melbourne Renegades bringing in Sam Harper, the experienced wiki keeper, but did lose Adam Zampa and Joe Clark off to the Renegades. Now they do have the Melbourne hero, Scotty Boland. There will be a bit of a question on how many games he's going to play with the up-and-coming tests. Now Stoyan is still there for the Stars, providing some all-round value. Glenn Maxwell coming off a phenomenal World Cup campaign. He is in some career best form at the moment. But the problem with the Stars here is the lower players on this squad just don't simply cut it anymore. The Stars have obviously struggled in recent seasons, and I think that is set to continue in BBL 13. And I'm fortunate with a bit of bad luck luck, mismanagement, and just, yeah, some players continuing to leave. It's a very weak squad they've been left with. Obviously, they had a few players who were looking to come over, but unfortunately, have withdrew pretty late towards the season, so I haven't been able to bring it much back in. Unfortunately, another poor campaign coming up for the Stars. So now, in at seventh position, just missing out on the last spot, but still being a slider this year, that being the Brisbane Heats. Now, for me, they're going to be the major slider in this year's competition. Now, they did finish fifth last year and actually had a pretty good run. Now, they're going to have a limited or really no games this year from Manus Labashain and Usman Kawaja, which is obviously going to hurt a lot. And they do have Michael Nisa, who picked up 26 wickets and the second most uh, last season. So obviously, he is in some really good form. They also have the likes of Sam Billings, Colin Monroe, Mitchell Swepson, uh, Renshaw, Nisa. So obviously, he's going to be the best player on this team and he's really going to have to carry this bowling squad this year. Now, it's a squad that looks quite relatively thin on paper compared to a few of the other clubs and the pay stocks are strong but player availability will be their kind of overall questions with them this year in BBL 13 because similar to the stars their bottom or five or so players are really lacking experience and I think really are going to cost them so unfortunately similar to the stars the bottom players aren't just going to cut it and they will finish in at seventh. So now in at sixth position, unfortunately just missing out on the chance for a little bit of finals action, I have the Adelaide Strikers, who did finish seventh last year, so we see a little bit of slight improvement. Now in a devastating setback, we did see Rashid Khan having to withdraw for the entirety of the tournament with a back surgery. Super unfortunate, one of the most damaging, one of the most entertaining players to watch. It's really going to hurt their bowling stocks, and he just gave them so much X factor. Now it looks like they did name Travis Head and Alex Carey to their rosters, but it does doesn't look like they're going to play any games whatsoever. So already off the bat, some few really big losses coming into the season. Now, they do have a few other nice plays, including Matt Shorter that brought across, Chris Lynn, amongst a few others. Now, the Strikers did only manage the five wins last year, and I can't see them significantly improving that much to be in the finals, but I do expect some slight improvement in terms of some other changes. They did bring in English bowling all-rounder Jamie Overton, who joins the Strikers fresh off being crowned the 100 player of the tournament. Now, he's going to have a massive role to play this season alongside Darcy Short, who, like we just mentioned, had been recruited from the Hobart Hurricanes. Now, considering the losses of, you know, Rashid Khan, Travis Head, and Alex Kerry were unlikely uh, to play whatsoever, they're going to be unlikely challenges this season. So now we move on to fifth position. This is where things start to get a little bit more interesting as we have the better teams of the competition. In a fifth position, I have the Sydney Thunder. Now, they did finish fourth last year, so slight regression. Nevertheless, they're still looking to build a bit of consistency after their last campaign and looking to contend for finals once again. They picked up Cameron Bancroft. That is a massive addition. He's in some career form at the moment, and he could pair nicely at the top of the order with big hitter Alex Hales. That could be a really dangerous duo. They also have Nathan McAndrew, who's currently second in leading the wickets for the Sheffield Shield with 28. They've got Captain Chris Green, who always seems to provide a little bit of value. They've got David Warner, who may play a few games. Doubt he'll provide much impact. Doesn't seem to do well at the big bash level. Now, for me, the only real concern here with the Thunder is that little bit of inconsistent middle order they have. They've got Ross, Davies, and Sanger, who I think 
are really going to be the proving factor on how well they do this year. I think sometimes they'll be a bit inconsistent and kind of let the batting order down a bit. So I think it's usually going to depend on those three in the middle order to see how well the Thunder can do. So we now move on to fourth position. I have a riser for this season, that being the Hobart Hurricanes. They finished in a disappointing sixth position last year with stars Darcy Short, Ben McDermott, Nathan Ellis underperforming compared to their usual high standards. Now Darcy Short has since departed over to the Adelaide Strikers. But local heroes McDermott, Ellis, Matthew Wade and Tim David all remain. Plenty will be who require of those for this season as I don't believe the overseas recruits will promise much for them this year. Now for me with Hobart. I'm particularly concerned with their top order. They do have a variety of bowling talent, which does give me enough hope in them that they are going to be able to get back into finals contention, but that top order seems to sometimes crumble in important games, so that's going to be the only real concern. Their bowling, it's nice. It's got a lot of variety and some top talent. Overall, I think they should be a final side. So now in at third position, I have my club, the Melbourne Renegades. I'm really excited with what our Melbourne Renegades squad for BBL 13 looks like. We've got heaps of talent, heaps of experience, and heaps of variety, all in equal measure. After finishing at the bottom for three straight years, the Renegades finally climbed back into finals contention and finished third in BBL 12. And I think they're going to be a strong side once again due to the additions of Quinton de Kock, Adam Zampa, Joe Clark, Nathan Lyon, and Peter Siddle. What a good wide variety and good talent we picked up over the offseason. I expect those signings will perfectly complement the side we've already got and perfectly complement the youth we've got in Sutherland, Fraser McGurk, and Harvey. And I mean, don't forget Aaron Finch. So I think that's just, yeah, everything's setting up for a successful season for the men in red, my team, the Melbourne Renegades. This side has plenty of depth with no real obvious weakness. So I think a finals appearance for the Renegades is very likely. Alrighty, so the top two clubs remain is the two usual teams right at the top as per usual for my predictions. In its second position, I have the Perth Scorchers. Last year's reigning champs and they finished first as well last year. Now they're going to attack this new season with a fairly similar squad, only really missing out on Cameron Bancroft, who sent it over to Sydney like previously mentioned and Cameron Green, who simply decided to pass on playing in BBL 13. And they do still have heaps of talent going around in Josh Inglis, Mitch Mars, Jason Baranoff, Joe Richardson, Aaron Hart, Ashton Ager and Ashton Turner, who have all represented Australia at this level. So like I said, there's still heaps of talent for them to strive for another crown. Now, they did add the overseas additions of Zach Crawley and Lurie Evans. So that's only going to help them even more. Now, for me, Perth's really only weakness is probably in the spin department. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that will hurt them. Overall, they've still got another really solid squad and another really good chance of winning. Alrighty, so now in at first position, only one team remains, and that is the Sydney Sixers. Now, they finished second last year, so I have Perth and Sydney swapping positions this year on the ladder. Once again, they have a stacked squad with heaps of depth. They have last year's leading wicket-taker in Sean Abbott. They've also got heaps of other well-rounded talent in Jackson Bird, Dorcious, Moses Enriquez are still around providing value. So at Murphy, who continues to develop and grow, Silk, Vince, and I just really can't spot any holes in this six the squad. They have really good bat depth. They have, you know, both quicks and spins and really healthy supply, and they can really cover for a few injuries and absences, which is obviously really, you know, the key to having success and consistent success over the BBL. And I think another great campaign is coming Sydney's way. Now, the real deciding factor could actually be how often Steve Smith plays now. I mean, we saw how much, you know, he really gave them that X factor when he played in the few occasional games. So even if Steve Smith is in there for a few games and somehow maybe qualifies for final, that could be, you know, the real difference maker for the Sixers this season. If not, I still think they've got a really good squad and definitely deserving of being put in first position. Alrighty, so now to end off the video, we're going to run through my BBL 13 grand final and winner's prediction. So my grand final for the up and coming season is the Sixers taking the Melbourne Renegades. This will obviously be at the SCG. Like I was just saying, I think the Sixers will be the clear best team. I think they'll be able to get through the competition quite comfortably this year and easily book a spot into the grand final. I think the Melbourne Renegades will be more of the outsider team. I think they'll probably start off slow, but really catch fire come the end of the season and quite also easily get through the finals, booking a spot in the grand final. Now, coming into it, the Sixers would be the clear favourite, and I think that's for obvious reasons. As my BBL 13 winners for 2023-24 slash is the Sydney Sixers. I think they're going to be the clear best team all year. Stay consistent. 
and their top end talent is just going to get the job done for them. I think the Melbourne Renegades will have a quite a good story this year, proving a lot of people and a lot of doubters are wrong, but unfortunately coming just short. Overall, I think it's going to be a super exciting BBL season. I think a few right changes have been made. So I think, you know, it's a bit of a recipe for success for this up and coming season. Cannot wait. See you all soon.